So what's better, a competitive tournament or a narrative event? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Glacial Geek video. I am Phil the Glacial Geek, and today I am coming here to talk to you about two big events that I went to recently. I went to the Games Workshop 40K Grand Narrative in Atlanta, and I also went to the Warzone Atlanta Competitive Tournament in Atlanta. Uh, Grand Tournament, uh, there were two big tournaments. Uh, one, obviously, narrative-based. One, obviously, competitive-based. Uh, and to answer the question that I pose, that both of me posed in the beginning there, uh, they're both amazing. And I, there is no answer, because there, there, there can't be an answer. For me, at least, there is no answer. Maybe for you, there is an answer. But you won't know until you do it. And that is what the crux of this video is about, is to tell you about my experience, and to tell you kind of how I feel about the two of them, and why... For me personally, I'm going to be doing both and continue to do both because of what they made me feel and how they made me feel. So uh, let's talk about the grand narrative. Uh, it was an incredible time. Three days of just uh, immersive experience where we got to uh, play six games. Uh, there was two games a day, about four hours per round, which was nice. It's just nice and easy going. Uh, no really worrying. Nobody had game clocks. They were actually banned from being able to use them. Uh, and it was just people getting together to kind of tell the story. So we were break, broke down into three packs. Um, and each of those packs were kind of doing different things. And each of those packs was led uh, by a, an actor who was wearing full cosplay. So you had... Uh, you had like a traitor guardsman uh, sergeant who, or commander who was leading. You had an inquisitor, and then you had uh, some uh, like a sorcerer uh, that was that was leading it. Um, highly, you know, highly suspect. <laughs> um, but the, but it was uh, just super fun to see just like the dedication that they had uh, to their their craft and to their art there to try to tell the story. And each of the packs were playing games against the other packs uh, to try to win points towards the the uh, the eventual story that was being told. And each morning and each night we had uh, break, we had breakdown uh, we had sessions when they would tell how to tell us how the story was going what was happening and what it was that we had to do so each pact had uh, not just the mission that you had to play but you also had these secondary missions that would help push your pact up you know for further along uh, and they were just so much fun uh, the, the immersion, everyone else wearing cosplay, what you saw, the me in the robe, that was me. I wore that for the entire weekend uh, and just got to enjoy being a member of the Death Wing uh, for, for a weekend there and playing with my Dark Angels and just having a ton of fun. Uh, it was also the first time I've ever played Crusade, uh, which uh, was interesting and it was kind of cool to see how things could build up, but... I kind of got away, I felt like it got away a bit from um, uh, kind of where I would like to see games. By the end of it, I had, a, like, my 10-man Deathwing Night Squad uh, could advance and uh, could advance, charge, uh, or could, could uh, get plus one to advance and charge, also could scout nine inches, and also had... Um, like something like something else from the leaders it was like it was like uh minus one to hit or something like that it was just it was it was pretty wacky and they were just slaughtering things because they were really good at what they did there at that point and it felt like it got away and i know the crusade is not meant to be you know balanced and the the narrative event was not meant to be balanced like there were missions that you were just like you just couldn't win it's just the reality of what was happening there and that's fine then that's fine to me like not having the like unbalanced missions is fine having unbalanced games is fine uh but it felt like it got a little further away away from kind of the the level of balance that i kind of want uh, at the end there so i feel like going forward maybe crusade is not for me but it might be for you i'm sure there are plenty of people that have a ton of fun doing crusade and like to see themselves build up like that uh, but for me, I, I, I prefer a little more balanced game. I love telling the narrative, though. That was incredibly fun. Uh, having that immersion with people, like, you know, dressing the part, taking on the roles, talking to you in, in, in character. They had people in each of the sectors that were doing that and telling the story. And having the story build and come to its eventual climax was incredible. Like, so much fun. Uh, and it was just just an amazing time to just be immersed in the nerddom, immersed in the lore of 40K, immersed in the game for a weekend, and just have a great time. And I met uh, some incredible people, had six incredible games. I went uh, five wins and one tie, uh, which I didn't care about because I was just having fun doing it. And we were all there just to like enjoy what we were doing. For instance, like they had at one point we were I was playing a game, and our Inquisitor came into our sector and said, "I need you to drop teleports, like like teleport beacons on this planet." And it, do it as much as you can. That's what we need to drive ourselves forward. So, I, you know, we found out that what that meant was I had to do an action, basically just like deploy teleport homers. 
Um, so from that point on, I was like, is there a limit or anything? They're like, nope, just do as many as you can. So I had from turn two on four units just deploying teleport homers. And at the end, he comes by, he's like, so how many did you deploy? I said, 16. And he was like, there you go. That's how you do that. So uh, I like, I wholly committed into it, even though that was four units that were not doing anything for me on the tabletop. It was getting me the it was getting me the points for the for the for the pact, and that was a ton of fun to be able to do and feel that kind of like camaraderie with the other pack members and doing everything that you could to just like keep going forward with it, and it was a lot of fun, a lot a lot of fun. Uh, so uh, it was just very different too to anything I've done previously. So there was like that wow factor that came with that. Um, they also at the event had the world championships going on, so I got to see and meet uh, or see a bunch of people uh, that I had met before and that wouldn't normally get to see because they live over in England. So I got to see Mikey from Hellstorm Wargaming. I got to see um, Stephen from Vanguard Tactics. Like I got to meet a ton of people, uh, and it was just a ton of fun to just be surrounded by hundreds of nerds doing what we love and just to be inspired by the paint job that some of these guys had on their armies, the the, the display boards that they had with their armies, uh, and just the fun and the lore and the story that we were all telling together was just incredible. It really was, and it was an absolute blast, and I will absolutely be doing it again next year because I had too much fun not to. Um, I got to see uh, Matt from Mini Wargaming again. I haven't seen him in a long time, and it was, it was great because he was doing the narrative too. Uh, John from Tabletop Titans. Uh, it, was, it was just so much fun to be part of this and just be uh, immersed in this for the whole weekend and just enjoy it. And it was just very low key, very easy going. The fact that we were just doing it for, you know, f four hour games. You, you know, if you're just playing with someone and can't do it in four hours, something either went very wrong or you're still learning. And none of us were really learning. All of us were just there to have fun and do a fun game. So they were really great, ton of fun, amazing time. We had like amazing moments. Like we had like, uh, we had Lionel Johnson facing off against Magnus and he uh, manages to run in. Magnus kills the lion, but, um, oh no, no, the, the lion kills Magnus, but then Magnus explodes and that kills the lion. And it was just like, oh, it was beautiful. It was wonderful. Like this just like, like this this pyric explosion of amazingness <laughs> in the story that we were telling and it was just so much fun to be able to do that and just enjoy it and laugh with my opponents and just six incredible games with six incredible opponents and had a really great time telling a story that was just so much fun to be a part of and then on the other hand we had uh or not even on the other hand then the other side we i also went to warzone atlanta went there and uh, I did have to drop uh, after four rounds and said I couldn't do the fifth round because I had to get home for some things. Nothing bad. It was all good. Um, but it did mean I only did the four games, but I had four incredible games that I just had four uh, opponents that were really there to just have fun, uh, try our hardest. And we had hard lists and I ended up going three and one in that one. Uh, but I got perfect sportsmanship score, which meant that my opponents thought uh, like there was a rubric that they gave out there. And one, the last question that I had on that was, was this one of the best games of 40K that you've ever had in your life? Uh, and I had all four opponents apparently said yes. And that means a lot to me. That means more to me than like any prizes, any any championship, any like title, any trophy that I could possibly win. The fact that I got to go to this event and I presented to four people four incredible games that they hopefully will remember and had a great time doing. And I myself had a great time doing it. And I think the big reason that I enjoyed the games was that I was making sure that they were enjoying the games. And I think that they, they felt the energy I was putting out and they re reciprocated it. And this is a super competitive tournament. You know, these are people that are competing to try to win like an actual GT, like win a big tournament, win the prize support, win whatever it is. And you think about it, it's like the cutthroat nature of the whack players at tournaments. I had four incredible games, like four incredible games that I got to play with four incredible people and enjoyed myself thoroughly throughout it. Even the game I lost, we laughed because at the end it ended up with like Abaddon like uh, racing off to go try to take down um, take down uh, the angriest of Rons, Ang Angron. And uh, he goes up and he shoots at him with a dark pact, rolls the dark pact, fails the dark pact, rolls a three and dies. So he just like faints as he's running off to go try to punch Angron in the face. And the two of us just like, we're laughing our asses off, just having a ton of fun with this. Uh, and it was amazing. It was so much fun to be able to do that, go up there and have so much fun. And that's why at the end of the day, the question that I posed, that both of us posed, is is there's no real answer for me because for me I need I want I want and and need in my nerddom both because both fulfill uh, aspects and fill me with an energy that is is hard to explain unless you do it honestly unless you are there immersed in what's going on it's very hard to to kind of really understand that kind of uh, that kind of energy that kind of response that you have uh, when you go to these events and they I left both of them feeling just just 
powered up uh, for Warhammer. Like you go and you see the armies and the display boards at both of the events and you can't help but feel inspired to want to do more and do better with painting. Uh, 2024 is going to be one of my goals is going to be to push myself with painting and push myself uh, because I, I'm, I'm okay. I'm decent. I think I do a pretty good job and I'm, I'm very pleased with my paint jobs. Uh, but I feel like I could push myself more and try things new and try to push out my boundaries of where I'm at because I'm, I feel like I'm pretty good at army painting, getting armies that are uh, looking good on the tabletop for the game. But I'd like to try more. And I feel like one of my goals is going to be to try to enter into a painting competition uh, with no aims of actually winning the top prize, but to compete, to be there and, and put my entries out there and, and try and try because it's something new and see how it goes and see what it's like for me to paint like a display level miniature uh, for, for, for a tournament like this or for, for a competition like this and, and just kind of go through that process and see what it's like because I've never done it before. So why not try it? Because it's an aspect of this hobby that I could try. Because I love all the others. I'm reading the books. I'm playing the game. I'm painting the models. I'm collecting them. I'm 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 immersing myself in all this. So why not try something else that that happens in this hobby? And I know that not everyone loves every aspect of this. There are people that just love the painting. People that just love the gaming. People that just love the lore, um, or any combination of those. But for me, I love all of it and I want to keep going and I want to keep pushing. And that's what these events do is they just inspire you to do more, to want to do more. So you go to a tournament and you lose a game and you're like, wow, that guy played really well. And I love what he did with his list. I love what he did on the, on the tabletop there and I want to be better. And it makes you want to be a better player. It wants you to learn on crafting your list. It wants you to, to learn the rules of your army. It wants you to want to try harder to, to do better. And... It's the same thing with the painting. You see these painted models, you see these display boards, and you're like, wow, that is just incredible. And I wish I could do that. And it's like, why don't you? Like, try. Put yourself out there, keep pushing, and keep trying. And if it's something that you feel you want to do, then, then do it. Try it. Push yourself to those things. And that's what these events do, is just inspire you and fill you with this just like this energy and that, that you just have so much fun and you're inspired by everyone else that's there that you leave these events just feeling powered. And that's what I get from it. And it's because I go into it looking for that. I don't go into it looking for prize support. I don't go into it looking for trophies. I don't go into it looking for accolades. I go into it looking for fun games. I go into it looking for camaraderie with a bunch of different nerds. I look forward to meeting, seeing friends, seeing old friends, meeting new friends. And I look forward to just being just immersed in this hobby that I love. And that's what I get out of these tournaments. That's what I get out of these events is that, you know? I didn't leave with a single to like a single trophy or prize support for any of them, but I left feeling so jazzed that I'm ready to go. I wanna do more, and I wanna be it more, and I wanna see more, and I wanna do more. And that's what the, the power of these events are, and that's why I suggest and recommend, I can't recommend more highly that everyone try something that they can. So if there's a big tournament that you've been sitting on the fence about going to, do it. Because I guarantee you, you will be just jazzed. It'll be an experience that will make you feel good. And if you're concerned about losing every game, I've, I've had tournaments where I've lost every game or won one game. And the way that tournaments work is that you're going to be paired into people that are having the same kind of tournament as you. So that your last game, if you have lost all your games, is going to be against someone else that has lost all their games. And the two of you can play and see what happens. So you're going to be on getting put into levels of games that you're at the same level as the player and you're just there to just enjoy the game and have fun. So if your concern is that you're going to lose, I mean, then I mean this is everyone loses. Like everybody loses. Even the grant at the grant at the at the, the the world championships that was happening at the same time as the grand narrative, everybody lost. Everybody had a loss. Even the grant the world champion lost because it was like a double elimination bracket that they had at the end there and he lost they had to re-rack and play again before he eventually won. Manny Chima. He lost a game. So there was zero people that were undefeated at the World Championships. So if you're looking to go to a tournament and, and the only way you're going to enjoy it is be undefeated, then you're going into it with the wrong mindset. And that's not what you should be looking to get out of the tournaments. Don't look to them to be world champion. Look to them to be enjoyable, fun, and just like energizing to you. Because that's what it is to me and, and I want that for you. That's why I end all of my videos with have fun because at the end of the day, that's what this is about is having fun. Enjoying yourself, enjoying the hobby, enjoying the camaraderie, enjoying the community, enjoying being part of this. And these tournaments, these events do that. And I can't more highly recommend it 
uh, I can't I can't recommend it enough because of what it does and how it leaves you and the, just the 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 energy and the the, the the power that it just like gives you to keep going and doing more. So I really highly suggest everyone do these events. Do it if you only played competitive tournaments, try a narrative event. If you've only done narrative stuff, try a competitive event. If you haven't done either of them, do either of them. <laughs> and feel the, the just the, the energy and the power that comes from having hundreds of nerds doing the same thing as you are and be inspired by the work that they've done and inspired by the by everything that they put into it. Because that's what it leaves for me and that's what this is all about to me. And that's why these events kind of just like, uh, they just encapsulate everything about this hobby that I love. So you have the narrative event encapsulating the lore and the painting and the gameplay. And then you have the competitive events like very much emphasizing gameplay, but also uh, fair play and sportsmanship and enjoying each other's company and having fun at the tournament. Um, and they had like a War Masters challenge, so they had people that were there just to, just to be winners. And that's fine. They went a day early and played more games than I was going to play. And they were competing for top prize for that. But they also were then having competition. They were not necessarily gunning for, you know, best sportsmanship or whatever. And that's fine because they found the way to enjoy the tournament that they wanted to enjoy. I found the way to enjoy the tournament that I wanted to enjoy. And I think we both left happy. <laughs> And that's what it's all about, is finding the way to leave happy, finding the way to have fun, finding the way to just enjoy yourself. And enjoy your company, enjoy your, your partner that you are in the games with, because they're not just a partner, they're not just a competitor, they're not just your opponent. They are your partner in fun. They are your partner in this experience. And if you both can leave that table having a great time, then that is a win for both of you. And that's what it's all about. And it's important to, to, to put yourself out there and try these new things and try these things that, um, that scare you, that, 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 you know, that, that they're intimidating. Like I said, I'm going to be trying to do a, a competition level paint job. Ah, that's not my, that's not, I don't feel like that's me, but I'm going to try because why not? You know, at the end of the day, the worst thing that comes about of it is that I have a model that is painted. <laughs> you know, if I don't win anything, big whoop. Oh, well, say la vie. And that's what I think is so important about these things, about these events, is that they just they just energize you and jazz you and, and just inspire you to want to do more. Because as much as you can look at art models online, on Instagram, on Facebook, on, on YouTube, whatever it is, you can see them and they look great and you can be like, wow, that's really incredible. But seeing them in person, seeing the display board, seeing the basing, seeing the model, just like being able to look at it just like in reality is something on another level. And I highly recommend that people try that because it is so inspiring to want to do more. So I, I hope that this was helpful. I hope that this was uh, maybe inspiring. Maybe it'll make you want to do more. Maybe make you want to try a tournament or a narrative experience, or maybe it just makes you want to just like keep going the course. Either which way, I, I, I hope you guys have enjoyed this because I certainly have. I have been Phil, the Glacial Geek as always. So until next time, stay safe. And most definitely, have fun.